All right, guys, here we're looking at a heat pump today. Uh, first thing I like to do when I walk up to a heat pump is take a look at the data plate. We're gonna go ahead and figure out who manufactured this unit and the age of the unit. This is an International Comfort Products. It was manufactured in September of 2018. So we got that information so far. Next thing I like to go ahead and do is check a look at the filter, check out the size, make sure it's clean. You can see this one's dirty. We're gonna recommend it gets cleaned, or well, not cleaned, but replaced um, into the report. Also, you're gonna to wanna to take a picture of that and uh, notate the location for the client as well as the size of the filter. When it comes to heat pumps, um, you'll notice on the thermostat you have three different modes. There's cool mode, there's heat mode, and then there's emergency heat mode. So on a heat pump, we will be testing all three of those modes. Um, so the first one I always like to do is heat. Just go ahead and knock that out, turn up the heat on it, make sure the heat's operational. Um, use your thermal camera, of course, take a picture of the supply of the heat coming out, make sure it is working. Um, next, I like to go ahead and put it into cool mode at that point. It'll take a few minutes to come on to allow the reversing valve and everything to take place. Uh, after about 15 minutes of letting it run in cool mode, go ahead and take a picture of the supply and return. Make sure we have at least a 14 degree difference between those two numbers and write it up as operational or not operational. After you're done testing cool, go ahead and switch it over into emergency heat mode. You can let your client know the only time they would need to use emergency heat mode is in the event that we're having very cool temperatures. Regular heat mode is not quite doing the job, so we're gonna flip it into emergency heat, and uh, that way the house can be heated at that point. Uh, but we're gonna test it at the inspection regardless of if it's hot or cold outside just to make sure it is operational because a lot of times the HVAC contractors may forget to hook it up or something like that. So flip the thermostat into emergency heat mode, crank it up on heat again, give it a few minutes and then take your thermal camera, point it at the supply, make sure we're getting some heat coming out of there to verify that the heat strips in the unit are operational. All right, after testing it for operational abilities, we're gonna take a look at the unit itself, make sure it was installed properly. We're gonna take a look at the suction line, it's all intact. We've got the foam insulation properly installed around it. We've got the rubber grommets here and where it goes into the unit to prevent any condensation from dripping out and leaking all over the unit and the pan. So we're looking good so far. Obviously this is an electric unit, so we do have this electric service going to it. Uh, we're gonna make sure this wiring is in conduit. You can see here they do have it in conduit, nice fittings, all the way until it gets to the disconnect box. You can see the disconnect properly installed, has a secondary safety cover. Go ahead and take a picture of that. We're gonna look, notate the location of that in the report for the client as well. Next on the heat pump, I'm gonna make sure it does have, in fact have the overflow pan installed. These overflow pans are necessary, especially if they're around finished space. They will leak condensation eventually. Those are there to protect. Um, so, now that we've verified there is an overflow pan, you can see here they have a float switch installed. We're gonna make sure that's operational by simply just lifting the lever on the float switch. Whenever we lift it, you should hear the unit shut off. If you lift it, and sometimes you've got to lift it and hold it for a second, but make sure you are lifting it and testing it. You'll hear the unit shut off. That's how you know it's operational. The float switch is working fine. If you do lift that switch and it does not shut the unit off, make sure we write that float switch up. It's defective. It needs to be replaced. Also, go ahead and take a look at your condensation drain line. Check for any leaks around it. Check the fittings especially. Uh, make sure we got this nice little drip loop. And it Check where it connects into the uh, condensation pump here. <clears throat> Make sure your condensation pump's operational. A lot of times the only way to tell is if there's some water in there, you can shake it around, get it to engage. Uh, obviously if it's overflowing with water, you know it's not working, write it up. Condensation pump needs to be replaced. And then also verify that your condensation pump is in fact connected to the unit. Same as the furnace. If the uh, condensation pump goes bad, if it's not hooked up to the air handler, the air handler is not going to know the condensation pump went bad and it's going to start overflowing. So verify that's connected and operational. That's it for heat pumps.